Ted uh, fully transitioned um, surgically and legally to try to be and live as a woman for, what, 12 years? And God delivered him and saved him. He's going to share that. But it's, uh, like I said, I mean, what powerful te- one of the most powerful testimonies I think I've ever heard what God did. And we are blessed to have him at our church. And, and I know he, he goes to two churches. He goes to our, our fellow church there in, in Next Level Ministries in Montgomery. You're going to hear from Pastor Troy uh, later on. But uh, Ted, Ted's a blessing. And like I said, just be warned if you think it might be too sensitive for your children. Now is the time to step out into the foyer or the children's room. Uh, and you can watch this video later if you have to tend to them. But you have been warned. Amen. So let's give a welcome to Ted Halley. Okay, well, I hope you can hear me. Um, man. I feel like I just been to the woodshed. Um, thank you, Matt. Now, you may think it's just the hecklers that we move this around, but the Holy Spirit moved it too. Why did he move it? Well, Matt's defining what is a man, and I'm at the other end of the spectrum. What is not a man? Um, I really wish I wasn't talking about this, but we are. It's something we have to deal with. So with that, let me, um, let's bow and ask the Lord's blessing on this time. Heavenly Father, we're about to deal with an area of darkness, of sin, depravity, that looking back, it's a road I wish I had never gone down. Lord, but your word says you meant it for evil, God meant it for good. We know that all things work together for good for those who love you are called according to your purpose. Lord, each and every one of us has turned to our own way, but you cause the iniquity of us all to fall on you. And you redeem us, Lord, even if we do it once, twice, three, I don't know how many times. You are always there bringing us back. And Lord, I just pray that the word that's, that I'm about to speak will be enlightening and encouraging. Lord, we rebuke any demons that would try to um, attack us. We claim your protection. And Lord, I especially pray for some people that will be hearing this in the future that are questioning who they are, that this truth would be presented and they'd be set three. We thank you and we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Okay, um, I wish I could move around more, but again, this is not a topic and I'm going to get a little excited, a little animated, I'm just audience participation. First question, how many of you personally know someone that is thinking about being transgender, has transitioned, um, just anything touching that? Raise your hand. Even people that know me, you can raise your hand. Okay, quite a bit. Unfortunately, as Matt Long has defined manhood, in our society, it's going down the toilet. And we're replacing these men with people that aren't men. And um, we don't even, I don't even know what they are. So what I want to start with is what is tr- someone that identifies as transgender? I want to say first off, being transgender is a lie. It was a lie from the beginning, just like in the garden. And will be a lie till Jesus comes again. So, don't let anybody say, I'm transgender. No, you're not. No, you're not. That's a lie. And whatever you do, don't, do, don't, do, um, don't affirm a lie. Okay, I'm going to try this out. Got this newfangled. Um, oh, you know what? I got to do the slide. I'm looking at my computer. Let's see. Does this thing work? Okay, there. Well, didn't build the slide out. Sorry about that. Okay, now we're, now we're in sync. <laughs> so, when you think about transgenderism, it's really quite a spectrum. But basically, what we're looking at, this thing turn on or turn it off? Okay. Is it's someone when they look in the mirror, they see something different than what they were created. 
It could be a man seeing themselves as a woman, which I did. Or it could be, you know, either way. But the distinction I want to make is that transgenderism, again, it's a lie, but I'm not going to keep saying that, is who you see yourself as when you look in a mirror. It's very different than someone who is gay. Or another terminology is same-sex attraction. Um, Someone that is transgender might, might not feel that way. I know some of you might be asking, well, what about you? Well, I, I, I'm i still attracted to women, always have been, and never changed. So, but then, you know, when you go down this road, it's a, it's a mixed bag. So anyway, I just wanted to get that off. So we're all in the same, ah, got to get this thing going. Okay. So um, with that, Someone that identifies as transgender, it can be from A to Z. Um, It could be someone that just identifies as a pronoun. I've known people that say, I'm transgender. I don't look any different. My name is Susie. Could be that. Going a little bit more, it could be they start wearing makeup, grow their hair out. If you're going as a female, cut the hair off. They can start cross-dressing. I know we, we don't think about this, but a man can cross-dress in women's clothes. At the same time, a woman can cross-dress in man's clothes. Think about that. Um, for women that identify as a man, um, well, let me go back. Then you can have someone that's a weekend warrior. I was initially part-time weekend warrior. But like, as you know, sin is never satisfied. So I um, started cross-dressing, and then you do hormones. Um, if you're a woman, it could be breast binding and then going full-time. For me, it could be voice training, surgeries, or to some of these surgeries. Um, it could be beard removal. It could be a breast augmentation or a breast removal. It could be what we call bottom surgery. In extreme cases, people lengthen or shorten their limbs. I know that's crazy, but they do. There's also surgeries to change your voice tone and also even um, teeth shaping. So kind of starting this off with a little bit of sense of humor. Everybody knows who that is. That's Baffinet, an androgynous god. And I I came across this. I was transgender before it was cool. A little humor there. But um, there's another person up there, too. I wonder who that might be. I don't know, but that person tells me they were transgender before it was cool, too, because they started uh, around 2010, and it wasn't until a little bit later that it got more popular. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Three pictures, before, during, and after. Isn't that amazing, the same person? Yeah, that's what I did. So we'll talk about my journey. We're going to talk about the battlefield. We're going to talk about the lies of the enemy and what can you do. I hate to say this, but I have enough material that I've learned over the past two years that, you know, this whole conference I could talk, but unfortunately I only have an hour, so let's get moving. Let's see. All right. All right, so this is me. A little boy in blue circled when I was about four years old. This is before my marvelous sister was born. But um, how did all this come about? What happened? I promised you I didn't ask for it. So another question. So anyway, I, it's just weird. When I was about eight years old, one day, um, that would be me and Mary Lou was just about to be born or had been born. I was in my mother and father's bedroom, and out of the blue, it never happened before, um, my mom had bought this sparkly blue pantsuit by man catchers, and unfortunately, it caught my eye. I don't know why, I just started that day being attracted to women's clothes and shoes. Crazy. So anyway... um, 
this is back in about 1968. You know, people back then never heard of a transgender person. In fact, the terminology hadn't even been identified. But yeah, that was me way back then. So um, a few years passed, and about the age of 14, um, you're going through puberty. You know, or, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, male or female, but it's just a very tumultuous time in your life. Hormones are aging, your body are changing, going from a, a boy to a man or a girl to a lady. I mean, it's just a hard time. For some reason during this time, man, I got hit hard. I was praying to God to make me a girl. Why? I don't know. Crazy. Again, this is about 1972. In 72, had anyone ever heard of a transgender person? Nope. So obviously, it was not peer pressure. It was not the world. It was something else. What was it? What was it? Well, um, this, about this time also I became a Christian. I actually do believe I was born again, and this stuff kind of went away. And that's kind of the story. You know, I can't describe all the waves, but a little bit later, you know, 23 or so, it came back again. And I won't go into all the details, but I'll say I dabbled with it. And all the way up to I was about 50. Um, yes, I was married. And all I'm going to say, due to the public forum, that stuff went on that probably should not have. So about the age 50, um, I had been divorced, and uh-oh, something's mad at us. <laughs> this is a cell phone phone. I'm trying to keep track of time, but oh well. When I get too far, someone raise or wave at me or say, be quiet. Um, so about 50, I'd just been in a six-year engagement with a lady, and um, things had failed, and... Um, I decided to agree with the enemy, and that's where we start going south. So, what happened? What happened? What happened to lead me to destruction? I'm not going to elaborate on all of these again. If I did that, we'd be here all day. But I will say, in the past, my family had a generational curse of sodomy, we have family members that still are, unfortunately, trapped in the, the, the sin of sodomy. We had, um, I'll say, other members that were fornicating, suicidal. I think at that age eight, I don't know how, but I think that generational curse spirit attached to me through that attraction. And um, when I was age 14, I prayed to be a girl. And that, to me, that just basically opened the door up and saying, hey, come on in. And I think that's where things really turn south. Um, even though I was a young Christian, I didn't really look for a way of escape. Or even growing up, I did look for ways of escape. But I was ignorant of the whole counsel of God. And again, we're looking here about, you know, the early, early 70s. And um, we grew up Southern Baptist. You know, they were not talking about deliverance. I had never heard of it. What in the world is a demon? That's something that, you know, I just read about a long time ago in the Old and New Testament. You know, they're not real. I had no idea how real they were. So, um, basically, when you go down this road and you embrace sin, Especially to me, whether it's, you know, transgenderism, cross-dressing, whatever it may be, you're basically having an affair with a demon. Think about that. Similarly, if someone's doing pornography, they're having an affair with a demon. Powerful stuff to think about. Pretty strong deterrent. But that's not the complete answer. Another thing, too, which I talked about, you know, I perished because of lack of knowledge and stuff. I didn't know everything. I don't know what I'm right now. My conscience has been seared. You know, at age 50, my starting to conform to the world. And, you know, I did not realize till recently how important 
it is to take care of these temples we live in. Matt Long talked about it, and you know, I really appreciate that, brother. That is the truth. But um, along this line, part of my surges was I destroyed my seed factory. You know what that means. But I encourage you to, if you have a chance, look up these verses in Deuteronomy. I mean, it is amazing how important it is to guard your temple. And don't destroy it, don't harm it, don't harm it. I mean, I just, I, that's just a challenge to you so that you go read these passages. So, uh, again, I have, someone on Facebook had this, this graphic, and I thought it was kind of neat. Um, well, probably be good for you to see it too, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, how do demons get in? I won't say these are all the ways, but, you know, we talked about generational curses. Got that one. Sexual sin. Got that one. Um, touch close association. Probably got that one somehow um, through something that happened. But yeah, don't open doorways. So going down this crazy wackadoodle road, um, I know some of y'all are thinking, well, how far did you go to that far country? Well, I just always like to say this. It's like all, all sin. It, sin takes you further, keeps you there longer, and costs you more than you ever could imagine. Yeah, I, you're going to see that this is for real here. So, I went to counseling um, for a couple years. Why nowadays do they only affirm, gen, you know, transitioning? I don't know, but, you know, it's like, no one says, don't do that. But that's what I, that's what I did. Started cross-sex hormones in um, about 2009. Started electrolysis, removing my beard. Yes, you guys, I have a beard. I got beard in me. Um, I'll never be able to grow one, so I'll just have to admire you. So anyway, yeah. Uh, if I see you look at your beard, it's not for any crazy reasons. I'm just thinking, why did I do that? Um, then one of my surgeries is a little liposuction, facial feminization. I was saying, what is that? Well, it's basically where you mutilate your face and take away God's natural order and make it look unnatural. And unfortunately, it's not something you can undo. Did that. Um, had general reassignment surgery, got rid of my seed factory. People think, oh, that's not a big deal. Well, it is. It's a real big deal. It's a much bigger deal than we ever think about. So that's why I want you to go look at those verses in Deuteronomy. Yeah, it's a big deal. Had a breast augmentation. I know you think that's only for cancer victims. Well, it's also for crazy wacky little people that go down this road. Why? I don't know. Legal name change. Voice training. Yeah. <laughs> Some people are real good at it. I'm going to tell you right now that probably all of you at one time or another have encountered a transgender identifying person, either identified as male or female. You did not know because they can be pretty dadgum convincing. Some people have, I mean, a good voice, and, you know, they got it down. So, but they need salvation just like any of us. Changed my birth certificate, all my accounts. But, you know, one of the verses that Pastor Troy talked about last Saturday on 12 Reasons Why Not, one of them is it says, you shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Of course, that context talks about dying, but I think the idea is the Lord doesn't want us to cut up our bodies. And as I said, those verses in Deuteronomy you know, kind of support that. So, how did I go from being in the far country here today, well, that's what we're going to talk about next. First of all, um, as you see on the screen, 
See, my family, these people were my life preserver. These people saved my life. In fact, I would like my sister Mary Lou and her husband Eddie to stand up. I wouldn't be here today. You can sit down or keep standing up, but last time I would encourage you to go back to the 2021 um, deliverance conference where we, we shared. I mean, we could do a, a tango right now that, you know, there's just so much more I want to say than I can say here, but what I'm saying is she, Eddie, my brother, sister-in-law, they prayed for me, many others. Some of you did. Thank you very much. And if you have people in the far country, never quit. Never quit. So what happened to make me come back? As I said, about nine years into this, um, I will tell you that going down this journey, this is one of the weird things that I don't think is just necessarily transgenderism, but any sin as you go down it, the, the satisfaction, the joy, the euphoria you get from it is crazy. It's literally like a drug. I think it is a drug. And, you know, there's certain phases when people go down this that the first little bit, I mean, unless you, I don't know, you could tie them up and hit them with a baseball bat, still wouldn't probably deter them. But it's just the strength of this delusion is so strong. In early days, I mean, it's, it's crazy how it just changes your psyche, your body, everything you do. And, yeah, it, it works for a while. I got all cut up. Man, was I happy. I would look in the mirror and say, you know, looking, seeing that person you see up there and say, wow, I finally did it. This is who I really am. And I like the analogy of the expensive car or something. How many, okay, audience participation, how many of you bought something expensive that you later regretted? Come on, be honest now. Get those hands up. I know you can put them down now. It's called buyer's remorse. Yeah, it happened to me. I was happy. I, I'm not teasing you. I was very happy having a good time. I had more friends than I ever had before. Wasn't doing anything really bad or anything, just hanging around, doing stuff that, you know, that you think women do. But anyway, but about 2018, thank you again, Mary Lou and Eddie and family, for all for your prayers. Um, chickens came home to roost. Truth came back to bite me. The truth never changes. We change. We think truth changes, but it never does. You know, God's Word is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and it's not going to change. People out there can say, well, God um, made a mistake. No, He didn't. He made two people, two types, male and female. Now, there's a small segment, Lord have mercy on them, that are intersex, that have, you know, genetic deformities, but that is a very, 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 very small group of people. So, yes, you know, I can't imagine what it's like for them, but we won't get into that. That's another topic. Yeah, about this time, I started having waves of suicide, thoughts, darkness, and they become closer and closer together, more and more tense, deeper, internal dissonance, that joy of looking in the mirror and seeing that person you see there. I didn't like it anymore because I wasn't who I was created to be. And I'm thoroughly convinced that God's Spirit was working in me because of the prayers and of the truth. So, again, just like that prayer at 14, I did another crazy wackadoodle prayer. I pray, God, if you want me to detransition, hit me up the side of the head with a baseball bat. Be careful when you pray that. I'm serious. Be careful when you pray that. When you challenge God, He'll answer you. And it might not be how you like it. But anyway, we'll keep going. Um, during those dark days, 
two things kept me alive. I know as crazy as it was, I still had faith in God. I was still reading my Bible occasionally. I was going to a church, even though it was a, a gay church. And believe it or not, I was actually an elder for three years in a gay church. And, you know, the thing that I want that I won't go down that is just pray for these people. They're deceived. So, anyway, again, I could talk all day about this. March 2021. Real name, Tinker or Ted. If you don't know anything about me, if I'm not fixing something, I'm not happy. I mean, so during this time, I was fixing TVs, and I'd fix one for my sister, and March 21, take it back. I, this is a day in my life that I had no idea it would turn out this way. No idea what was going to happen. So anyway, uh, take the TV over there. Um, early afternoon after she had gotten, gotten home from what church? Best church in town, Fire and Grace Church, right? There you go. Why do you want to go to another church when you go to the best? When you go to the, don't look anywhere else, so the rest. So, got the TV delivered. Um, and I, I said, hey, can we have a talk? And you know, the Spirit's prophetic. The Spirit will tell you things before you know that's going to happen. But talking about a lady that walks with God and speaks to her, that's my sister. And I praise God for her every day. But just a little aside here, I just want to say all of you that have walked with God day by day from an early age as a Christian, your testimony is the most amazing, not mine. I'm basically a flash in a pan. But the steadfast in Christ, that's who you want to be day by day by day. It's not exciting. It may not be fun every day. But I promise you, in the days ahead, you're living for Jesus. You are not going to lack for excitement. It is coming. It's already here. So we went out in um, the backyard and sat down on a porch and we talked. I expressed to her my internal di discord that was increasing. I expressed to her um, some other laments. I won't go into them here, but that I had thought about taking my life. And um, as we were talking last night, she said something clicked in her spirit. She says, you need to do something right now. You need to go to war. Praise God. When God tells you to go to war or pray to, for somebody or talk to somebody, that may be the moment that saves their life. You don't know. So we've got to stop being thick-headed and listen to the Spirit and do what He says because you don't know what difference that's going to make in someone's life. Praise God that Jesus got her attention and said, Mary Lou, do something. So what did she do? Um, of course, she was walking with God and all the gifts of the Spirit. She asked me if she can pray for me. Of course, I was, you know, just about at the end of my rope. I said, sure. I mean, I'll take anything I can get. I was just, I mean, I was just, I don't know. I just say it's the end of my rope. She said, can I pray and anoint your head with oil? You ever had that done before? I don't remember, but I said, yeah, go ahead. Again, nothing I could lose. So I sat down in a chair like y'all are sitting right now. And this is one of the funniest things we laugh about all the time. And the Holy Spirit gave it to her. I know she said, hold on, something big's about to happen. That ever happened to you? Hold on, something big's about to happen. She was joking. I was laughing. Ha 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 ha! What's going to happen? I don't know. What something's going to happen? Okay, but we had no idea. Remember that baseball bat I talked about? Okay, we're about to come to it. So, what did she do? She anointed my head with oil. She prayed for me. She bound and cast out those spirits of suicide, perversion generational curses, sodomy, and there could have been some others. 
I was crying. My, I mean, again, during this time, I'm just, I'm just a broken man. Of course, when you live in sin, that's what it does. The wages of sin is death. It always is. And anybody listening, yeah, you can live with sin. It'll be like that expensive, shiny thing, but eventually you're going to get buyer's remorse. So she finished praying for me. I said thank you. And I had to get back to Montgomery because my granddaughter, which you saw earlier, um, lives with me, and I'm raising her. Um, won't go there right now, but still going on. And nothing big had happened. Was that just a joke? <laughs> you think God has a sense of humor? You better believe it. I mean, one of my favorite ones, again, we won't get too far off course, is, you know, here the, the disciples are in this ship, and the, the, the waves are rocking and rolling, and um, you know, they think they're about to die, and Jesus comes by. Hey, guys, how you doing? What's happening over there? <laughs> yeah, our God has a sense of humor. He still does. So anyway, I started driving back from Opelika to Montgomery, about 345. So well, how do you remember that? Well, I promise you, when you go through something like I did, you remember really clearly. And for some reason... I can't tell you why. Our, our father died in 2013 from um, bladder cancer, but he loved the Opelika Sportsplex. He used to tell me how wonderful it was, and having grown up in Opelika and gone to the rec center over there by the middle school, junior high, you know, I'd never seen it. So I said, why today? I don't know. But anyway, I decided to take a tour, a detour, and drive around it real slowly. Well, that's when stuff started happening. I'd gone down I-85. That's where I normally go. But she didn't know I'd taken a detour. And so I'm at the sportsplex that, you know, has a pickleball courts. If Bucko was here, if you all know John Bucko, he'd, he'd sing. He'd tell you about that and different types of sports fields, a swimming pool. I mean, it's a great place, walking track. Well, here I am driving my truck, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, I just start crying uncontrollably. I mean, why? I don't know. Then the next thing you know, it felt like someone had their hands around my throat. I was being choked the living daylights out of me. I couldn't breathe. I was like, Extreme dry heaves that felt like I was drowning. Large, deep, guttural sounds. And this lasted for about 30 minutes. And, man, <laughs> what in the world was that? What happened to me? Well, I drive a little bit more, and the same thing happens again. And I'm thinking to myself, Jesus, what in the world is going on? Be careful when you talk to God, he might answer you. And it's like, not, not audibly, but in my head, he said, there's seven demons and seven demons leaving you. That was number two. How many of y'all felt like you're drowning before? Some of y'all? None of y'all? I have a couple honest people out there. Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's what it felt like. And about after number two or three, I say, I called my sister because this was like totally foreign to me. I grew up Southern Baptist. I won't say as a cessationist, but I was not familiar with the supernatural and how real it is. Well, I was getting my taste this time. God was really showing me. So anyway, I called her, and Eddie and Mary Lou immediately started praying for me. And while we're on the phone, another one left. And this is what's crazy to me, but, I mean, it is, but it isn't. You know, they could actually hear discernible, audible voices. So, um, this happened a total of seven times. And, of course, I'm about to go crazy out of my head. What in the world has this happened to me? You know, again, I'm not familiar with demons leaving out of people. I never denied it, but I didn't think I had seven demons in me, but I guess I did. I know I did. 
I started to cry. And eighth time, I was say, is there more God? I said, if there are any of me, please get them out because I don't like this. This is like one of the worst things I've ever experienced in my whole life. And it turns out seven was it. And from the deliverance conference, it's level two demons, three levels. I'm not going to tell you what they are. You go watch the deliverance conference. But biblical. So I immediately knew, finally, that I was free to transition. It was like we turn the lights off here, it's pitch black, and you turn them on. That's what my heart was like. That's why I have the picture of the sun. I repented. I praised God and thank him that those demons were gone. So, getting back to my baseball bout, remember I said, God, if you want me to detransition, hit me up the side with a baseball bat? Well, being as thick-headed as I was, <laughs> not once, but seven of them. Seven baseball bats. God, thank God for baseball bats. Yeah, he made it really, really, really clear. No doubt, no doubt that it was time to come home. So, um, again, talked to my sister. We cried and praised the Lord. I called my eldest son. Um, he had, you know, it's so funny how sometimes our children are right and we're wrong. He always poked me in the eye. He said, Dad, this is wrong. You shouldn't be doing this. You know, he was right. He was right. So he cried. Um, the rest of the story is, you know, I sold a car that I had, a little sports car to pay for the only thing I could do to detransition other than cut my hair. And during that time, probably the, I, I don't know, one of the hardest times of my life is when you look in the mirror, you know, like we talked about earlier, you see a woman and you're really a man. Well, I was really a man. I was still seeing a woman. That was hard. I had to live that way for about two months. Um, I wanted to come to Fire and Grace, but I didn't because I didn't want to offend people. I tried to stay home as much as I could because I knew I was visually an abomination to God. I knew he'd forgiven me. I knew I'd been redeemed, but that was hard. Thank God Mama Lou loved me enough to go with me. He went back to the same doctor that did the damage and paid him to correct what he'd done as best I could. So, anyway, praise God, I'm back from the far country, and I'm slide 13 of 45. We'll see how far we go. Okay, we're going to take a little um, intermission here for a advertisement. This is one of the things that just grips my soul, and I just get so excited about it. And um, how many of y'all here know you're a temple? If you, your hand isn't up, you are. You are a temple. God's Word says you are a temple. What? You do not know your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God. You are not your own. I want you to think about this for a second. Okay, everyone that knows biblical cosmology, this is your eye test. Where is the Old Testament model of what the earth really is? Okay, y'all see it? Well, those that may not know, thank you, Pastor Dean, pointing this out right there. That's the Old Testament model of the earth, the real earth. So, okay, what are we going to think about here? What is a temple? A temple is a very special place. It ain't no trash. It's not a cardboard box. It's not a tent. It's extravagant. It's where the king lives. In this case, the king of the universe, the creator God, he lives in you. He lives in me. We're temples. Just take some time and meditate on that. It'll get you excited if you're ever down. Then on top of that, you get a bonus offer. He lives in you. 
God, Holy Spirit lives in us. Another verse says, in this jar of clay, we have a great treasure. Holy Spirit is a treasure. God didn't make no trash and has a whatever living there. You are a temple, top of the line, and you have the God of the universe inside of you if you're a true believer. So meditate on that. That always gets me excited. Okay, let's keep going. Well, with that, this is not somewhere I imagine I'd be three years ago. If you will, in your mind, roll your mind back three years. Where were you standing in June 1st, 2020? COVID had just kicked off. I was still living in the far country. And today, I'm standing in front of you, telling about the amazing transformation that God offers to each and every one of us on planet Earth. That's right. Praise God. So we're in a battlefield right now, and you may be thinking, well, well, Ted, what are you doing? What are you doing now that this has happened? Well, last Wednesday, um, by God's grace and mercy, um, a little aside again, I'm teaming with some other people that have detransitioned that God has pulled back, you know, medically and, and otherwise, and we're trying to get the truth out. There's a few of us out there, not very many. But um, see if this thing works. I, I don't know. That guy kind of looks familiar. It looks like the guy talking to you, maybe. This guy here is my friend Billy. He, like me, um, went in the far country, came back on fire for Jesus a few years ahead of me, um, just doing amazing things for Jesus. But God called us. Like Matt talked about, we have to stand up for our rights. And God is using this in the state of Louisiana last Wednesday. I'm not done with this. Just hold that thought. But we are in a battle. I know you heard a few weeks ago about a transgender identifying person going to a Christian school. Again, we could talk about that and peel back the onion on that. There's a lot of stuff there. Um. Part, your own Department of Defense says it's okay for seven-year-olds to take um, gender-changing you know, treatments. Yeah, we have a government that's trying to kill us. Not only that, you know, we have stores that are embracing this, and thank God there's been some repercussion. So let's take a little bit further here. I want to take you back in time, take you back to the beginnings of us in creation. So let's see. I know I'm looking at the clock, but man, I got 13 minutes. I need about 13 hours. So we're just going to hit this real high, real fast. How many are you in the seed war? Okay, I should see every hand up. I should see every hand up. It is that important. It's that important. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. If you don't understand this, you're not going to understand a lot of the Bible. Again, we could do a whole conference on that. But basically, the battle between God and the devil all throughout time, goes back to the seed war. The devil is trying to kill the seed of the woman. Not only is that Jesus, but we are God's seed too. We've been born again into his kingdom. And that battle is still alive today. It's still going on. The gender, transgender movement at its roots is this. The devil trying to kill, destroy, and steal the seed of God. But you think, well, is this new? No, 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 no. It's been going on since the beginning of time. 
I mean, since the fall of man. Again, we could talk about Nephilim and giants, but that's not what I'm here for today. But, as it says in Ecclesiastes 1.9, there is no new thing under the sun. Nothing. So, if you will, where's all this stuff coming from? Well, we know that we battle not against flesh and blood, but paraphrasing principalities, powers, authorities, and wickedness in high places. And as you know, our enemy has a well-organized army, just like that Texas army Matt told you about. Our enemy is very sneaky. And one of the funny things is, is he has a playbook. And you know what? It's the same one, time after time after time after time. And we as mankind are so stupid, we fall for it time after time after time, including me. You shall become as gods. So, who is this ancient spirit that seems to have come back around? Well, the name of this spirit is Ishtar, Astarte, Venus, Aphrodite, and this spirit shows up around 1750 B.C. This is what's crazy. She appears as an attractive, beautiful woman, strong, masculine features. What is strange about that? She says, I'm a woman, I'm a man. I can turn a man into a woman and a woman into a man. Does that sound familiar? Nothing new under the sun. This is what even amazes me more. Is I, I wish I had time to, to read these, but you can go back and do it. What is happening today? Most of y'all know that the, I don't even like saying it, the LGBT whatever celebrates Pride Month, the month of June. You know what's funny? Is this is not new. This celebration is over 3,000 years old. Did you know that? Nothing new under the sun. And followers of this old spirit do it today, 2023. Again, I'm, I'm going to have to go really fast here, but it started back in 1969 with the Stonewall Rebellion in New York. This old parade in the month of Tammuz, Junium, June, men dressed as women and women dressed as men, um, perverted activities went on. And as Pastor Dean talks about, I know I'm going to say it wrong, Isabus or something like that, but anyway, if you want to read about it, you can. Uh, that's right, I got to get these things in sync. So basically, right now, we're in what they call fifth-generation warfare. If you've heard that term or don't know about it, I highly encourage you to read up and educate yourself, because that's why we're all so confused. People that are your friends are your enemies, and your enemies are your friends. Our old standard Chick-fil-A, yeah, they're going woke. How many people watch The Chosen? Some, few, at least you've heard of it. How many people have heard of it? Okay, most of us have heard of it. They're going woke too. The LGBT flag, that's about as, that's like putting up a pentagram with the devil on it. Even later today, I don't know, Pastor Greg Locke. I didn't write this, I just quoted him. Billy Graham, Robin Bullock, others. Are they elements? Are they your friends, your enemies? I make no judgment right now, but just ask you to think about it. So, what is happening today at 6 p.m. in Opelika, Alabama? We just talked about it. Yep, one of them parades. Satan's moved into Opelika. Pray for Opelika. We need revival. I'm going to have to speed up here. 
So, these, I could, again, I could talk about all of these, but I guess I want to hit on a couple highlights. Is when did all this stuff just seem to take off? Right around 2015. What happened in 2015? Our Supreme Court um, redefined what marriage is. We had a famous Olympian named Bruce Jenner um, do the unthinkable. And that's kind of the impetus of what kind of was the spark that got all this crazy stuff going on. So right now, we have the enemy grooming your children, your grandchildren, your nephews, your nieces, your friends, with all this kind of stuff. It, it, it's just all over the place. You can't get away from it unless you are fortunate enough to live off the grid and not inter interface with anybody else. These are, again, I could talk at least one each, each of these for about five or ten minutes. But the, the ne on the right side, Pride Month, what's in the middle of that? Yeah, you know what it is. Again, we have a president that just signed an act. Respect for marriage? Don't think so. So, man, coming in for a landing really quick here. I guess if I don't do anything, I want to talk a list a little bit about um, the medical part of it. Is again, we can go through all these, but the thing I want to point out is, in this case, the takeaway is, oh, well, puberty blockers don't do damage. They do. They do. They do irreversible damage. Again, you can read about those here. And again, you're... You're maiming a kid before they get started. I'm sorry, I don't like a child before they even get started on life. So, yeah, just to remind you, we are at full-scale war. Battle for you, battle for me, battle for our children, our grandchildren, and future generation. The, the San Francisco Gay Men's Choir sang about this a few years ago, and we thought it was funny. It's not funny now. So, warning here, if you don't like to see pictures of blood and guts, close your eyes. But again, I'm not going to um, dwell on this. I just want to point out, this is some of the cut -em up stuff they do on female to male. And that arm in the bottom center, that's not fake. That's real. This is insanity we are doing to ourselves that we're allowing girls to do this. And they create a, a phallus out of it. Again, I, I won't go any further due to time. For men, you know, we chop up their faces. Yeah, I had that, not quite that extreme. Um, take out part of your, your bowel and create a ne neo vagina. Can you imagine the complications you can have? I know of two people that have died and two that have almost died. And we're allowing people to do this? This is insane. So, does it work? Does it make people happy? Not really. Yeah, there's just more medical mutilation just showing that it ain't cheap. I know you're saying, how much do you spend, Ted? About sixty to seventy thousand. That was out of my pocket. Out of my pocket. But think about this. Nowadays it seems like the government pays that so when a child goes down this road over a lifetime, they're looking at one to two million dollars of medical, psychiatric, so on and so forth. Yeah, it's all about the money. So, mental mutilation. Sell this bag of goods to them. Turns out most of them outgrow it. And, you know, why do we do this? Food. Matt talked about it, about drinking beer. They're putting that stuff in our food. That's, that's a contributor, too. What can you do? 
Oh, man, I need a whole another hour just to talk about this. But um, let me catch up here. The main thing I want to point out is people going down and buying into this lie, they are sinners in need of a Savior. They are confused. You're saying, what is the number one cause of people doing this? Believe it or not, of all the people I know, it seems like the common point is some type of abuse, sexual, physical, emotional. I'm an oddball. I didn't have any of that. But, you know, I did have generational curses I had to deal with. But just, just remember that. Um, if you know someone that's dealing with gender dysphoria, don't take it lightly. Again, some of these slides I talked at a political um, club and really not going to go into them. Let's see. You know, as Matt talked about, basically he covered everything I could say. Basically, he talked about community, but um, we've got to get involved. So those that are living in the far country, like I did, the three biggest takeaways are, one, pray for them. Pray for them and keep praying and fasting. Never give up. If my sister and Eddie and my family had given up, I probably wouldn't be here today. Love them radically. It doesn't mean if their name's Ted and they called Teresa, you don't call them Teresa. My family called me T. But I, I can't say that hard and fast. That's however the Holy Spirit leads you. So um, speak truth. Poking them in the eye, if they're already going down this road, probably ain't going to help them, but, you know, do give them truth. And I just want to remind you, like, like Matt said, none of us woke up this morning and said, I want to be a drug addict, I want to be uh, addicted to pornography, I want to be transgender. It's a process. We've got to be very careful. The farming care in the world does not work. It just creates more problems. We talked about going back to the, the truth, to the Bible. We as a generation have lost that. Very few people go to church anymore. We've got to, as Matt said, we've got to reinstitute that, teach people the truth, teach people who they are. People are buying the lie. They're believing whatever's under the sun about who they think they are. But we've got to drive home in the truth that you are a boy, you are a girl. That's how God made you, and that is what's best for you. Um, I talked about Louisiana. Do you believe God's good and works miracles? Sat on that committee. The, the leader said, yeah, I don't think we should do these to anyone under 18. Then tabled the bill. Guess what? God's getting him back. This bill is coming up today. Today. H-Bill 648. And I ask you, I won't do it right now, but in the next few minutes when we take a break, Pray for God to have that bill passed to protect the children of Louisiana. We have these other states that, you know, do have this. Um, there is more good news. There is some out there. But again, this is all in the agenda of the devil and the end times. And I think one thing to keep in mind is there's going to be a lot of people with buyer's remorse. But I think there's opportunity for revival coming. Again, we know where this is going. Some resources. I have four books out there. I did not write them. But Aaron Brewer, who's a, a mighty woman of God, did. Has some great information. God ain't happy with us. In summary, I'm sorry, a little bit over time, is... We're in a battle for our children. We, you, me, all of us, your friends, family, neighbors, need to be involved at all levels, political, local. Be willing to make tough choices. That cell phone or tablet or computer your young one has, that's not a right. That's a privilege. Stand up for truth. Again, be compassionate. 
We are all sinners in need of a Savior. You have people with unimaginable, unimaginable regret coming when they realize as a young person they mutilated their body. Never will they be a mother or a father, or, but ultimately we know who wins, right? Jesus, when he comes back. So I want to close this. Why am I doing this? Because there's going to be some people that watch this that are not believers. If you are not a believer and you want salvation, you want to be delivered from this, step of salvation, A, admit you're a sinner. B, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. C, confess Jesus Christ as Lord and confess and repent of your sins, which means instead of going that way, you go the other way. So with that, I wish I had some more hours, but I don't. All praise in my life goes to our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, who saved each and every one of us. I thank you for your time. Please keep me in your prayers. I'm still moving ahead in the battle, but the battle will be won. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, I want to tell you, the... There's no hate. When you, you see this story from somebody who went through this, it's not about hate. It's about we all sin, and that sin brings that depression. It brings that spirit of death. It doesn't help us. This is about hope. That's what it's all about. And Jesus is the only hope, and he's the only way, and he's the only way to be delivered from these powerful dark forces that get into people and get upon them and get them to do these things. So I agree 100%. Look. You know, we caught a little flack from the conference center and the university about having these discussions because, oh, it's hate speech. No, no, it's love speech. Amen. There, there is hope for anyone. And see, we can tell every LGBTQ person, we want you in heaven with us. How is that hate? We want you to know peace and joy and love and healing and freedom. How's that hating you? It's not hating you at all. So I appreciate you, brother, so much. Yes, sir. God bless.